Good afternoon and welcome to all of you, especially our visitors and those who have uh, come to Chicago for a vacation or to be with friends during these very holy days. There is a freshness in the air with the new springtime upon us. And the scented oil which we bless at this chrism mass invites us to recognize that the church is also entering a new springtime, encouraging us to take up our ministries with fresh vigor and eagerness. The readings for today only add to a sense of new beginning as Jesus inaugurates his ministry by entering his hometown synagogue and making new the ancient prophecy of Isaiah. Words now fulfilled in just hearing them proclaimed by him. The thematic connection of Isaiah's prophecy between the first and third readings give us the impression that we bless these oils for our ministries and the Word of God is drawing us into a scene from 2,000 years ago. But before we become too familiar with this approach to the readings, we should also attend to the text from Revelations. Its ap apocalyptic form disrupts the narrative, focusing our attention not just on an account of an event from the past, but on the announcement for us here today about the full meaning of what we do in blessing the, or these oils. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye shall see him. The message and the invitation as we bless these oils could not be clearer. He is so close to us in our ministries that his presence is palpable, tangible, intimate, but also invigorating, shielding, and healing, just as oil is on the skin. In 1998, I was ordained a bishop by Archbishop Harry Flynn, the Metropolitan of St. Paul, Minneapolis. It was his first Episcopal ordination, and so he was understandably conscientious to get it right. When the time came, for the pouring of chrism on my head, he focused his full attention on the book as he read the prayer. The MC handed him the oil which he had prepared in a liter bottle filled to the brim. The Archbishop poured as he read, and poured as he read some more, emptying the entire flask drenching me in chrism. As I stood, the oil flowed over my entire body, reaching clear down to my, well, shoes. <laughs> I frequently go back to that moment to recall how I felt in a very tangible way, the intimacy, the closeness, but also the freedom and the ease of movement and soothing touch of Christ, like the oil covering my skin. Oil has that ability to convey closeness and intimacy, not only on a surface level, but in a way that penetrates the pores, going even more than skin deep. It conveys an abiding presence becoming one with us. Oil also gives us greater freedom and ease of movement. Some early Christian communities, as still witnessed in some Orthodox churches today, did not hesitate to anoint the entire body of the newly baptized, equating it to the kind of oiling of wrestlers, preparing for them the struggle and guaranteeing the ability to elude the grasp of the opponent, who for the baptized is the devil. And oil also soothes, filling in cracks, relieving the sting of wounds. 
My brothers ordained to serve God's anointed people. In a moment, you will return to the day of your ordination by renewing your priestly promises. Be alert as you do so to the Lord drawing near to you in all these ways. Behold, he is coming. Let him draw near to you, penetrating more than skin deep, giving you a feel of intimate friendship. This will be your point of reference for authenticity and faithfulness in your relationships with others. It will also remind you to serve the people entrusted to your pastoral care with the closeness remaining with and accompanying them, giving an experience of God's nearness to them, especially to those who are alienated by life's demands and burdens, and to those who are pushed aside by prejudice, economic injustice, neglect, or attitudes that treat them as disposable. Accept also his anointing that brings freedom and ease of movement, unafraid to address the issues of the day and to enter the struggles of humanity. Remain undaunted by the firm grip that sin tries to have on us, confident that as Christ has anointed you to be free, he also calls you to anoint the people in that freedom and be open to his healing in your life. Those uneven areas of brokenness and injury where we are weak and feeble and flawed. The placing of chrism on your hands the day you were ordained came in the form of a cross. It was not Christ's cross. It was yours. For that is where the Lord first draws near to you. He starts loving you in your suffering, wherever your cross may be. He does not wait for you to be successful, accomplished, educated, or efficient, but rushes in with his soothing presence to assure you that you are not alone, which often is humanity's greatest suffering. Then when you anoint others with a cross on their foreheads and hands in baptism and in the anointing of the sick, you will be able to witness to the healing presence of Christ as one who himself has been healed. Behold, the day spring from on high is coming for all eyes to see. His coming anew is the new springtime, the new life that is all around us, one which touches us, that is palpable as oil on the skin. This is the act of faith we are invited to make today, even though we know all too well our failures, how we have resisted him drawing near, how we can so easily become comfortable in the embrace of sin rather than in having his hand upon us and his arm around us to set us free. It is an invitation offered to us even though we are wounded, and yes, even though to us who have wounded him. It does not matter, for today Jesus, the day spring, is coming again in our midst for all eyes to see, even for those who have pierced him. And all of this is fulfilled in our hearing.